Okay, customers just come to pick up his narrow gauge. Pulling around the corner here to pick up his narrow gauge. So the customer just showed up and as you're gonna do a quick inspection and walk around and go from there. I, I could, right in there. I, and yeah, this was this has to be tucked in behind here so it's out of the road because you can't have it by it. Uh, we cleaned the block as good as we could, eh? Mm -hmm. With everything. I've tested around it a few times and this is the only air filter I could get. Okay. Uh, there's a base on here. I want to show you just in case you take it off. Okay, I made this long yep. for a simple reason. When you go to put the cap on, eh? you see I have to this carburetor is bigger than the one you had. Mm -hmm. So I, I got this and uh, it's plumbed into both of those PVC valves. Remember how it used to hang down yep. on the other side? Yeah, just this that. pulls it into the carburetor. Is the, is the tube for your shifter uh, for the transmission. Oh, that's the vacuum advance there. Yep. For, uh, because remember they had drilled a hole in and stuck a pipe in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it was bottoming out and that's no good for transmission. Yeah. And say you want to turn it over but you don't want the pump to work. Just unplug the ground. Okay. And then when you turn the key on, that's not working. And the mechanical pump is still pushing through there? Or? Mechanical pump's right there. Yeah, no. but I mean, it's still, yeah, this yeah. will draw for 50 push This through. draws off of both, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And even if that one quits, this one draws. I've had these last as long as 17 years. Works the little lights, the fan and everything. Yeah. And that red button is off. That's one tank, that's the other tank. Okay, and uh, just one screw up here so it can't touch the tank, and you can lift it off, see? Mm -hmm. Just a compression tip. <coughs> if you put screws in there too long, they'll hit the tank, eh? Mm -hmm. When you lift these, take your fingers out of the way. Don't hold it like, because they'll snap and hit your fingers. You grease here with light grease that fills everything but you, you don't have to do nothing until next spring now okay I put a jack in here and jacked this up because it was hitting on the ski arm and break the nipple off eh so when they repaired this they well, didn't straighten it they after didn't they didn't think about nothing eh so the first time they go out the grease nipples drag you can see how much it was dragging there I got a couple new one of these on order at uh, Johnson's there. There's nothing wrong with this. Oh, it's good you, to have you could, a spare on. Yeah. If anything, tie rod empty. Eh? Okay. And then count the threads. Because it's supposed to have, when this thing is all set up, a quarter inch of toe end on the skis. Okay. So that's only eighth on each side. So you measure back here on dead center and here on dead center. Okay, and it's toe in. Yep. Okay. That's just for steering, eh? Right. Brake works good. And you know where to adjust it? Yeah, in that little slot there. Yeah, you gotta take this one off, eh? Yeah. And then lift that little in. Right here. And it's yeah. that turnbuckle. Yeah, and then turn it up so it's fairly snug. Uh, and this is your dial for however strength you want, eh? So clockwise is more power, counterclockwise less? Uh, uh, clockwise is easier steering. Yeah. But it's so easy steering, and then the odd time when you put the key on, uh, it takes a second or two for the brains to kick in. So if it gets to be hard steering, you just turn it back to low, and then on again and you're away. Okay.
So Dad's just done a complete walk around here with the customer, and they just started it up. The customer lives about uh, 400 kilometers away, so he's going to be eager to get it loaded back on his trailer, and he's going to uh, drive back home here today. He's brought his son with him, and uh, customer has another bombardier that uh, he's already dropped off. And uh, but this narrow gauge 1959. Bombardier is going into a body shop for a complete paint job and there's some interior work yet there to be done uh, along the edges of the door there they got to put in uh, new cushioning uh, because it kind of leaks there and uh, dad does do body work but he uh, it does tie up the shop for quite a bit and the customer actually wanted to take it to a different independent shop which is great let them do that and uh, so the uh, customer's pretty happy here and we'll keep on going. Don't forget to show them the cleat wear, Dad, on the... Oh, yeah. Here's another thing I didn't notice until after a while. This Got them slider business. Yeah. If you get gravel on, look how much wear it does on the cleats. Half of the bottom of the cleats wore out. You can see the lines. So, if you could get, watch your head, if you could get somebody interested and put two tires on your, oh, just take these off, put the tires. Yeah. You know, this, this might be okay, but. Uh, for, for us snow. guys that are on gravel and, and a little bit of gravel and snow and mm -hmm. because once the gravel gets embedded in there then it's just like an emery cloth steady eh? color are you going to go with? you're going to go with blue again? or no, orange pearl metallic there you go so it'll match the kind of stained wood inside yeah. it'll kind of tie it in together well you're going to have to send us a photo once it's all done yeah it's a uh, it's a nice little machine. Everything is somewhere down the line. If you want to go to hydraulic brakes, then you'd have to bring it back. Yeah. Dad did adjust the brakes though and get them working. So See, it is better than it was. Oh yeah. Okay. You gotta press a little bit, but it does work. Eh? Okay. I changed some bolts in there too. They had short bolts in, and you gotta draw the caliper back or the the shoe back to the rotor so I put longer bolts in to bring it in so it's closer eh? it okay. has to have a little clearance but it also has to be close eh? mm -hmm. right right. well I'll tell you honestly I'm surprised at the turnaround that dad got done on this usually a bombardier is in the shop for three four months and dad managed to get uh, a lot of the work done and uh, got it done stuff on the side and he uh oh don't worry there's one there no no there. i know yeah <laughs> yeah we're just warning you now that one you're, you're gonna be lucky if you get it by december no he has to have it by then so we got to clean up a couple smaller jobs in the in the the yard here and then we're gonna tackle that one get it into the shop yeah so the customer's just taking a look at the other bombard here in the shop for comparison here that still has the Put a few other things together here. So the customer just got everything loaded up here. And uh, he's tying it down. He's going to get it home. And uh, we're going to try and maybe some, post some photos. So we just asked the customer to send us some photos of the... Uh, what it looks like when it's painted up it's going to look nice and sleek and so a month or two down the road once it's all painted uh we'll be able to uh show you what it looks like after that paint job so stay tuned on this 1959 narrow gauge bombardier i just loved working on this machine so we're gonna say goodbye to the 1959 narrow gauge bombardier Customers is going to back up now and move it out of the yard. And it's going back to its forever home. It 
it's going to go for a uh, a paint job. Dad sure loved working on this machine. And there they go.